the deal, man. It's Tay B. And I just jumped up the first dirty good best. Okay. I just bought a baby mansion with a three car garage. I'll be chilling with my bitch and me some head and a massage. Who the fuck you trying to hit while you shooting in the Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We right back at it. We got Tay B jumping off the porch with us. What's, What's up, bro? What's the deal? What's the deal? Cooling, man. How you feeling, bro? Yeah, I'm great. Great. Excellent. Huh, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. So uh, what, what you doing here in Atlanta, man? What, what you got going on in Atlanta while you're here? I just came out here for some business, for real. Did some interviews and I had to meet with some people. We had like a studio session to go over the songs, like the songs I'm about to put out for a new tape or whatever. So we're going over songs for that. Like that. Yeah. I can dig it. Do you uh, you make it down here to the A a lot or what? Yeah, I got a, like a place out here, my cars and shit out here. So I'm always out here, I ain't gonna oh, okay. lie. When I want to get away from the city, handle business and whatever, I come down here, kick it. Word, word. Sure. Cool. So that's what's up, man. Good home away from home. For sure. Yeah. Nah, sure. I can dig it, man. <laughs> and uh, how you like the vibes here in Atlanta? It's cool. It's cool, for sure. Like, it's, I ain't never really had no problems down here, so I fuck with it, for real. Like, food good, all that, party good, all that, that shit, it's straight. <laughs> Word, nah, I could dig it, I could dig it. Now, you from Detroit. Yeah. Uh, what part of D you from? West Side, Seven Mile to be exact. Okay, okay. Part with. And, and for somebody that's never been to the D, can you tell them something that's different about Detroit than any other place that you've been to? Damn, man, it's a lot of shit different, like, everything, like, the way we move, the way we talk, you can tell, like, like if I see somebody, I damn near know, like, if they was raised, like, in the inner city of Detroit or whatever, they got that, they got Detroit written all over their body. Like, I know, I mean, I, where you from? From Detroit. I'm like, man, I figured you from Detroit, feel me? Word. Like, it's just, like, whole different movement, everything, like, different, like, the way we talk, like, for sure, like, yeah. everything. Nah, for sure. I mean, like, a Detroit cat could be spotted out, you know, like, in a, in a, in a, in a, a group of people, you know for what I'm sure. saying, in a, in a crowd. Sure. Um, now, let me ask you this. Is there a difference, or for a Detroit cat, can you tell the difference between a cat from the east side versus a cat from the west side or any other side of the D? Uh, sometimes. Right. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> okay, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. It ain't really like, sometimes like with the east side, because they like, yeah, yeah, no, like, it's like some shit like a nigga on the east side, like a wear, that I know a nigga on the west side ain't gonna wear. You feel me? But it's a couple niggas on the west side that probably would, but majority of them probably wouldn't, you feel me? Like, they, they got their own little way, too. For real, for real. Word, you know word. All right, so we halfway through the first quarter of 2023, man. How the year been treating you so far? It been good. I just dropped the deluxe for forever in my bag. I just dropped that. Dropped a couple videos and shit, so numbers been going up. Everything been going up more and more, so like everything been good for real. For me. Right, right. Now that's what's up. Now are you the type that do New Year's resolutions, or you just let the New Year come in and you just rock out? Um, it's cool to say it. But <laughs> yeah. I really just be going with the flow. Like I do whatever God lead me to for real. And I'm like a firm believer in that. Like whatever gonna happen, gonna happen. So, yeah. like some people that work for them though. Like you know, like saying something they gonna do something, putting their mind to it, doing it. You gotta stick it. At it, like you can't do it for two weeks and then stop, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your year can't start in February. You gotta literally start January first. You feel nah, me? So, that's real spell. Like you know, a lot of people do that, so I don't really do that because I ain't big on like I say something, I be off. I'm one of them people, so I just go with the flow. You yeah. feel me? Rather than saying something and then making myself feel dumb for saying. It. Yeah. Sure. Now, it, it's interesting, bro, because it's like a double-edged sword with it. On one side, it's like you don't want to make the New Year's resolutions because you don't want to have these things that you didn't do and you feeling bad about. But then on the other hand, when you talk about like manifesting, you know, uh, you know, different things and, and, and pulling that energy, you kind of do want to put it out there. So I get it though, because sure. with me for New Year's, I try not to do the resolutions, but I do set goals. Bingo. You know Every year you gonna have goals. Like one, you might complete them goals like this. It might not, you, you might complete them. You say we a quarter through the new year, you probably already and damn near completed it, you feel yeah. me? So now you need more goals. So you gonna always have goals. Like no matter what, no matter how old you is, you gonna always have goals for sure. Yeah, nah, for sure, for sure. So yeah, so you mentioned that you dropped the deluxe. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, the, the, the first project, or not the first project, but the first release, um, you know, did well, got like got a nice buzz, you know what I'm saying? Like sure. your name was 
you know, like really sparking, like, uh, you know, across the internet, socials and sure. all of that. Um, what made you want to come back and do the deluxe after dropping that first, the first version? I, uh, I like, so I ain't dropped no tape in like two years, three years before this, some shit like that. But I always drop like banger songs, like yeah. the keep me afloat. 2020 dropped in like, 2020. Yeah. Bingo, so I dropped that last, so it's been two years, you feel me, since I put out a project. I always just put out singles and shit like that, so. When I put out, I had so much music, because I've been recording so much music, just getting better and better, you feel me? Like, I always do that to myself. Like, I be feeling like I be having a lot of room to improve. So, like, I had so much music, so I'm like, damn. I wanted to put, like, 20-some songs on it when I first put it out, you feel me? But I didn't. I just said, like, man, I got so many songs, fuck let me put a deluxe out, you feel me? Like, mm -hmm. some shit like that. Right, right, that's what's up, man. And uh, I know, like, one of the, um, one of the songs that was really uh like that really kind of like recaptured the buzz for you was the uh the joint with Lil Dirt, you know what I'm saying? Oh, bingo. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So, that was tough. Yeah, video was sure. hard too. Video was hard for sure. Shout yeah. out to Dirt. Now um now you didn't put that on the project though, right? No, like that no. just dropped as a single and kind of yeah. created buzz. Yeah, 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 cuz I was with a label at that time when I dropped that song with Dirk. I dropped one song with them mm -hmm. and it was like a lot of like COVID shit going on, people coming, leaving, all that. So like, yeah. by the grace of God, I, I had a friend, he helped me get out of that situation, you mm -hmm. feel me? So I dropped this, my tape, people was thinking like, oh, he ain't dropping music because he signed the whole time. I wouldn't even sign. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just be perfecting my craft on my own, you feel yeah. me? So when I dropped it, I dropped that tape independently, no promotion, no nothing. Like, I just dropped it. I think that shit went like number 20 something on the Apple charts, yeah. like, got top 20. Mm -hmm. on the Apple charts, all that, so like, that was just all me, independent. Word, word, no, nah, I can dig it, I can dig it. Sure. Now, can you can you talk about that deal that you assigned? Cause you were signed to Columbia for yeah. uh, about a year, right? Mm, roughly about a year. Okay. For sure. Okay. And was yeah. that your first like major label situation? Yeah, I always been independent. Like I always knew how to make money off my own music, you yeah. feel me? Mm -hmm. So when I got with them, like, I appreciate them for, like, the opportunity, for sure. Like, I feel like now, like, if we went was in that situation, you know, it'll probably be better because of everything, like, open now. But mm -hmm. this, I I really got myself into an even greater situation. Mm -hmm. You feel me now? So, like, it was cool. Like, it was cool to get my feet wet, see how the industry is, and mm -hmm. see, like, what type of stuff you got to do when you in them type of situations. Like, so it was cool to get my feet wet with that. And, you know. That's pretty much it. Now, yeah. for, <clears throat> now, can you kind of give some, some feedback or even just like some background on what was the experience like signing your first deal? Because, you know, so many people that's going to be that, that's watching this interview, so many people that's tapped into the platform, you know, are independent and even want to know like what it's like and, and, and OK, why did you get out of your deal, you know, mm -hmm. so fast? So like what was, you know? See, like I was saying, like, it was, actually, it was a great feeling, you feel me? Like, every kid coming up that's been making music, like, that's what you dream of. You dream of signing that deal, getting a big bag, you feel me? They putting a the big bag behind you, all that. Like, everybody dreaming that, you feel me? So when I did it, it was like, dream come true. But then, like I say, in my situation, mm -hmm. it was like, it was COVID, so like, a lot of shit was shut down. Labels went like I signed my deal at a, like a we signed my deal at like a pool. It was a, we at a hotel at the rooftop like by the pool. We ain't even go inside the building to sign the papers because nobody was able to be around each other. Wow, you feel me? Yeah. Like everything was like messed up. You feel mm -hmm. me? So it was kind of like I got out of it because it was slowing me down. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like. My my A and R, she moved on to be like a VP at Def Jam. Another A and R I had, he that's who really like kind of pushed the envelope for me. He was like kind of brand new to the label at the time, so like it was just like it wasn't the right fit for me at the time. Mm -hmm. you feel me? So like that's the only reason I really had to get out because I was just like I can't put the music out. I can't. Right. You can, but it's a lot of work you got to go behind putting music out, especially when it's COVID. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? So now it's open, everything probably good, you feel yeah. me? It's like files to get get the um get cleared and all that, like that shit, that shit locked. It's locked for two years now, like mm -hmm. it's just too much going on. So that's why I ended up being independent again and my buzz started going back crazy again. I yeah. dropped a song called 
on some shit like that. Then I dropped a song, me and Cash Dog, called Whoa. Okay. Them two bangers right there, like, oh, them yeah. was two crazy ass bangers, like, back to back. Then I dropped sure. some other little shit. Then Forever in My Bag came, that really, like, that really, like, opened a lot of people's eyes. Like, I had a track, a, 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 a body of work that you can listen to from beginning to end. Like, yeah. and like man, this shit crazy. Huh. Yeah, um, touching on the song with Cash Doll, uh, that one was dope, where y'all took the Black Rob sample from Bingo. Whoa. That's hard. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that was real dope. For sure. Yeah. And Shout out to Cash Doll, that. that's my dog. What I do want to tap into with you talking about COVID and the pandemic. So I noticed that you, when you were dropping projects, you went crazy in 2018. And, um, and, and then, uh, then you dropped 2020 Vision in 2020. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask you with that project, did you drop that because of the pressure that kind of COVID brought, like where COVID hit and then it was like, damn, okay, I need to put some music out. Or was that kind of already in your plans? Do you, My do you neighborhood remember? in Detroit, we call it 2020. Ah. So I say the year 2020, they call it 2020 vision. Yeah. Feel me? That's some all the my pops and all the they that's something they created. Feel mm. me? So I've been that been my shit as a baby. So mm. I'm like the year 2020. I want to put a tape out called 2020 vision. Yeah. People don't know like it's really just my neighborhood. Feel ah. me? It's just the year is 2020, and I'm that's what they was called. You feel me? So that's really that's what that was. Right, <laughs> I ain't right. gonna lie. Yeah. I had to do that for the culture. Yeah, nah, I mean, so, like, the, the numbers, I mean, it's, it's too connected. Like, you got to do that. Yeah, I had to do yeah, that. For but sure. yeah, that's, that's just the yeah. way. Damn, they had to play those numbers on Lotto and everything. Man, you know? <laughs> everything. Uh, so, <clears throat> I want to tap back into, <clears throat> like, like, you as a person and, you know, your life, like, coming up on the west side of Detroit. Like, what type of dude was you coming up, man? Like, man, I really was just, like, Chill kid for real, like, feel me? I always was like family jokester, all that shit, but I really was just chilling for real, like playing sports, shit like that. I ain't really had to really like fend for myself and do too much until like my pops went to jail for real, like, okay. feel me? That was the first time, like, I was like 13. That's when I really started, I had to like do a lot of shit by myself or figure out a lot of shit, like when I started getting a little older, for real. When wow. I was young, I had a beautiful life when I was young. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> beautiful ass life, but you know shit happened for a reason, feel me? I feel like all that motives me into what I became. Like, yeah, for no, real. for sure, for sure. Do you remember um, when your pops uh, did go to jail, like do you remember like like your thought process at the time or like where you were emotionally, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's like my man, you feel me? That's my brother. <laughs> so like, it was just like, like damn. I didn't know he was in jail. When I called, he told me he lied to me. He was out of town, man, you feel me? So I didn't even know he was in jail, mm -hmm. you feel me? So like when I found out, I'm like, damn, that shit fucked up. I'm like, I was just praying he get out at least or like eventually one day gonna get out and mm -hmm. it happened, so it was all good. Or now, how did, uh, how would you say that affected you, you know, um, your pops, you know, being locked up and... I'm just, honestly, though, like, if he didn't, I'd probably be like a motherfucking spoiled-ass kid around here or something, you feel me? Like, that really made me into, like, my own man, for real, for real, like, it's like a lot of stuff that I had to do on my own, like, it was, it was, or that or had nothing, you feel me? So, like... Really, everything happened for a reason, for yeah. real, for real. And like, it helped me with my music career too. Like, it gave me a lot of shit to talk about. Okay. Feel yeah. me, like so. So, was you in a situation where, um, were you living um, in the house with both parents? Like, no, when I that always happened, stayed or? with my mama. Gotcha. Like, he had like nice ass shit. Like, I had the best of both worlds. My right. mama stayed in the hood. Like, I always went to ghetto ass schools, shit like that. Like, my mama stayed in the hood, but he stayed far. I always wanted to stay far out though. You feel me? But mm -hmm. my mama wasn't having this shit. You yeah. feel me? She like, you stay with me. You feel me? So me, my little brothers, I got seven siblings. Okay. You feel me? Okay. So, in the house with my mama, it was me, her. My two little brothers, you feel me? So I always stay with my mama for real. The year I did was able to move out there with him, be with the jail like three months later. Mm. I was pissed. I said, damn, I done waited all this time to come live out here and not again out here. I gotta move back to the hood. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's how that was. Word, word. So so you was big bro in your household. You was Yeah, the I'm oldest. the oldest of the older boys. Okay. I'm okay. the oldest. Word. So. That's what's up. So did that make you take more of a leadership role, like automatically? Just yeah, that's just like my just natural, just just me, like, mm. anyway, like, okay. feel me? 
I don't really like, I'm a leader, but I hate like having, look at myself like, I be, I be treating no matter who around me or what they got or whatever, I like treating everybody equally. Like, mm -hmm. feel me? Like, we all, everybody I hang with around really not my friends. Like, I really only hang around family. So we all look at each other equal anyway. Yeah, that's feel one me? of the first lessons you learn early anyway in the streets is that everybody not your friend. That's my yeah, like, you. we don't really, I, I got friends in the world, but like, that's not who I hang out with. Feel me? Like, wow. kick it, every blue moon, shit like that. But on an everyday basis, talking everyday basis, cousins, brothers, yeah. that's it. Okay. Feel right. me? And what would you say was that point when you jumped off the porch? You remember, like, how old you were? Like, really, really jump, probably like 17, wow. 16, 17, when I really started doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. Feel me? So, mm -hmm. like, sure. Nah, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, uh, so tell me, what would you say, man, is like one of the biggest life lessons that you learn, you know, like with, with everything that you've been through, whether it's like, whether it's, you know, in the streets, just within life or even in the music industry? Just don't take shit for granted. That's like the biggest thing you can do. Don't, don't feel like nothing can be taken away from you. Like you see the most famous people who sold the most records and the shit happened to them, you feel mm -hmm. me? Go broke. Feel me? They got all this money to go broke. You feel mm -hmm. me? You think you're on top of the world. Like, you got to really be humble. Thank God for everything you got. You feel me? And just play your cards right. Like, when you t start taking shit for granted, that's when shit get took from you. Like, uh, it's, it is what You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't never think like that. Like, yeah. I always think it's got room to approve, more to get, and be happy for what I got. Yeah. Nah, no, for sure, man. How important uh, are mentors, you know, big homies, man? How important is that, like, for us to have? And, and did you have any? Hell yeah, like, like all my daddy close friends, them like my uncles, you feel me? So, like, no matter, like, if they got money or whatever, however the case may be, they still teach me or I'm around watching them and shit they doing. I'm like, man, do I want to I wanna go through what they going to do? I want to do that, you yeah. feel me? Like, so, like, it's important because, like, you be a step ahead. Like I hang out with a lot of older cats too. Like, like if I ain't with my young cousins or something, like I went to niggas 40, mm -hmm. 40 and up, you feel mm -hmm. me? Just so I can be ahead of everybody my age, mm -hmm. feel me? Shit I got young niggas my age probably ain't gonna get for a long time or probably ever, you yeah. feel me? That's because I be watching the old heads, bro. Like yeah. the old heads really, they done made all the mistakes already, you feel mm -hmm. me? So how you can't listen to them and they done made all the mistakes? Right, right, right. right. They gonna either tell you, they gonna show you what to do or they gonna show you what not to do. No, you either sure. gonna be looking at them like, man, I do not wanna be like that or be looking at them like, damn, yeah. I wanna know what you doing. Yeah. You feel me? And your pops being so respected in the D, I'm sure that his his partners is was always just making sure that you was just on the right track and just on point. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. No, I can dig a it. couple of them. Yeah, no, for okay. sure, for sure. So man, you um now, o o over over the years, you've dropped like some creative projects too. Um, the LL uh, Cool Tay project, yes, super creative. Yes, um, where you, I mean, the whole project was like ninety samples, two thousand, <laughs> you know, samples yeah. like songs for the <laughs> ladies. Um, yes, even even the artwork, like where you took like the LL Cool J walking with a Panther cover Bingo. and flipped it. You know, um, just real creative, man. Can so. you talk about like what headspace you were in when, when you did that? See, look, I really like them. Be like a lot of songs. Like I started off making like shit like that. Feel me? That's what I had fun making because I listened to a lot of old school shit. Mm -hmm. Feel me? So like I had fun making them type of songs. You know what I'm saying? And, like. Babyface Ray gave me the name LL Cool Tay. And he be calling me like LL. That's yeah. what he called me. So I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna make this a tape. <laughs> yeah, word. You feel me? So like, that's why I came up with the name LL Cool Tay from him. And then I just ran with it for real. Did all my little sauce on that bitch that I be doing. And word. Came up with like that. They fuck. I think that, like, before Forever in My Bag, that was like my most selling tape, most streamed tape. Okay, okay. That word. little EP. And with them seven songs, like, streamed more than like all them songs I had on the other shit. Yeah. I can dig it, man. It it took me like so. I was listening like even to your mixtapes, like uh, was it minute after midnight? Mm. And uh, I mean that project. So to me, that project, like the sound that you came with on the LL Cool Tay, was that sound from mm -hmm. that. And from when I've listened to your music, I've heard you tap into that sound on a, on the song Ask with uh, mm -hmm. a Boogie. Yeah. Um, a few other songs I've heard you kind of tap into that sound, yeah. but uh, like, do you 
do you have fun like playing with all these different sounds yeah. and, and styles and things sure. like that? Like what's sure. on? See people not like, you know, like I got a lot of new fans. Mm -hmm. Like Minute at the Midnight, that I that's my first tape I ever put out. Like that was like a mixtape, but it's only on SoundCloud, you yeah, feel me? Yeah. So like they don't understand like the shit like eggs and shit like Rich All My Life with Lil Baby and mm -hmm. fucking uh Wish I Never, like that's like my original sound you feel me like i made my first detroit i made my first detroit song was uh, i think uh back to back with dz and that bitch just went viral so i'm like fuck, let me just tap into this detroit shit. Yeah, yeah. they fucking with it you feel me but i always got like you know like niggas look up or listen to like dope boys and the you feel me, the pioneers in the city like that and mm -hmm. You just want that. a lot of everybody was rapping like that. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. I liked it. I rapped like that a couple times, but I'm like, man, I want. I like this my style. Like, I'm, you feel me? You yeah, can't for sure. It ain't really like nothing. Like, can't really pick your style. When you pick your style, that shit ain't really. That shit don't really be sounding right. You gotta be just. You gotta let it come to you, and yeah. that's just what come to me. You feel me? So like, I be tapping into that shit like that. I just really be easing my fans on to it because they not really used to it because they don't really know. Like right. I've been making shit like this. You feel me? Yeah. I got so many songs like that. I just got in the cut. You feel me? Like yeah. just because I know how they be. You feel me? But they fuck with it more and more now as I'm doing it. You feel yeah. Me? Yeah. No, nah, it, it's dope because it's like a whole new form of discovery. Um, for uh, for you know for your old fans and yeah. then for new fans yeah. just to hear like how diverse for you sure. know you are with the music for sure. so only if it's only been a few uh artists who've had songs songs titled after them mm -hmm. and so uh skiller baby did uh a joint for sure. uh where, where it's titled you know your name and yeah. then did the remix sure. where he brought you inside of baby uh you know what I'm saying on the remix like yeah. how does how does that even feel bro like to have somebody make a name of the song and it's called tay b style yeah. or you know that shit hard that shit hard look because he hard as hell for that i ain't gonna lie yeah. that shit went crazy for him like that shit going crazy for me, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. And then it's a crazy. hard ass song, like, that motherfucker yeah. hard as hell, like. No, nah, for sure, man. Insane. And in an ego-driven game or industry that we in, you know, like, that's hard to find. You know what I mean? People aren't gonna do that, aren't willing to shout somebody else out. I mean, so. even on the remix, like, all the other artists on there is even saying something in reference to it. Sada Baby says something. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, so, like, that was just real interesting. That's and you honey. don't, that's something that's super rare, but then especially rare for a new artist. So that just shows, like, a lot of respect. For you sure. know what I mean? Sure. So. It's like, you know, I've been rapping since I was 12, you feel me? Like, like, and I've been doing it like with like a nice little name for myself since I was probably like 18, 19, mm -hmm. or maybe 20 is when I really probably caught, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, and I mess with everybody in the city, like no matter what they got going on or whoever, like I'm like a, just a general nigga, like they, everybody fuck with me, I fuck with everybody, you feel me? I show respect to everybody, they show respect to me, you feel mm -hmm. me? So like, you know, you just gotta be a real nigga, like for real. That's really all it is. Like a lot of niggas don't be fucking with certain shit because them niggas just be fake. You feel me? Like yeah. you know how it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, so uh, in 2022, you uh, signed a partnership with uh, Giant Music. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's like it's like really like a real, real great situation for real because, like I was saying when I was with Columbia, the dude he helped me like who signed me. He's actually you know, over there with Giant, feel me? So it's already like a family relationship there with him, feel me? So like, they a new label or whatever, like, so a lot of focus, they got a lot of focus on me, like, so they doing the right shit. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really like a great situation for me, for real, for real, like, everything, like, and it's like, we we partners, like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that's what I appreciate, mm -hmm. feel me? Like, we partners, they believe in me, I believe in them, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's what that is. Nah, for sure. So, uh, all right, so, so the new partnership, um, I heard you mention earlier that you were here in town, like listening to new songs mm -hmm. uh, for your new project. Mm -hmm. So the deluxe is out now, capturing good buzz and you already working on the next project. Mm -hmm. Okay, where, can, you, sure. can you tell us a little bit about that at all? Uh, I ain't really got like 
you know, name and shit for it, for real. I'm still just working on it, for real, for real, like, but it's gonna be turned, like, I got a little baby, he gonna executive produce the project, so mm -hmm. that's gonna be big. Wow. And, you know, so we really just working for real in the studio every day, just trying to figure out what songs we gonna put on there, yeah. how we gonna play it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What we gonna drop first, what singles we gonna drop, so. Yeah. And so just, just working. It's gonna be coming out in the next few months though, two, okay. three months, max. That's what's up, man. And Lil Baby executive producing the project. Um, I know we, we talked about it earlier. You had the song Rich All My Life yeah. uh, with him on it that had created a nice uh, buzz a few years back. Sure. Um, how did y'all connect? Like, what and, and what was that like, you know, working with him and, you know, when you first started working with him? Man, that shit was cool, for real, for real. Like, he just a genuine nigga, like, for real. Like, it's a lot of people in the industry that ain't really genuine, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of them I done dealt with a couple of like he like a real authentic nigga. Like and me and him, like we be like thinking like on the same shit. Like our birthday is like two days apart, so we just right. kicked it. Like we just be kicking it. Like most of the time we took when we I put up to the studio, we don't even be we just be talking for hours, you feel mm -hmm. me? Like he just a real authentic nigga. Like we had shot the video that day and I sent to him, he like, man, I don't even like this shit. We gotta shoot it again. Mm -hmm. Like he could have been like, man, all right, yeah, drop that shit, put it out, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He pulled up. Feel me, Brian Cars the video shoot, all that shit. Shot, we shot, reshot the video again. Yeah. Sure. Feel me? So like, a lot of artists ain't gonna do that. A lot of artists would be like, shit, fuck you. you feel yeah. me? We shot the video. That's your fault. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? nah, that's what's up, man. So man, how do you stay grounded, bro? Like when you, you know, you 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 got one of your peers making a song with your name as the title. Um, you know, Lil Baby, you know, you know, says and shows that he fucks with your style and your music so much that he wants to be a partner, you know, with you. Mm -hmm. How do you stay grounded and, and, and not, you know, get, you know, too big headed with this, you know? Man, shit, like you say, like I say, you know, stay grateful, you feel me? Then I'm seeing niggas like him getting $1.5 million for a show, you feel me, for one show. I'm like, shit, I ain't doing shit, you feel me? Like, yeah. that's how I'm staying grounded. Like, I gotta get up there, you feel me? Like, I need to be getting half a million dollars for a show, you feel me? Like, that's how I'm staying grounded because the shit that I'm doing or that, that nigga think it's something is really not nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's cool, it's something to a lot of people, but it's nothing to me because yeah. my goal's so high. Like, we were saying goals, like, my goals and expectations for myself so high. It's like, if I settle and be happy with me, you know what I'm saying, doing what I'm doing now, yeah, I'm just to be an average nigga, for real. Like, yeah. At the end of the day, I want to be one of the ones. So I can gonna be one of the ones. Yeah, no, I can dig it, man. And uh, what 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 do it take? What what does it take to be one of the ones? I feel like just hard work, hard work. And once you get that one, that real one, you good. You gonna gonna catch it. If you working hard, you gonna get it. Yeah. You feel me? So like. That's what it is, for real, for real. Nah, I can dig it, man. Yeah, that hard work, that consistency. Hell yeah, yeah. time, man. Yeah, nah, real shit. Um, so, uh, so Tay B, uh, what, what else you working on, man? What, uh, what else can can the fans, can the people expect from you uh, coming in 2023 and beyond? Man, just more videos, more music, more, I'm put like vlogs so people can really see what be going on around me, feel me? That's like another thing, like a lot of people ain't really, they like, they love my music, but like, if they really knew like how I act and shit like that, they gonna really fuck with my, who I am as a person, feel mm -hmm. me? So like, I'm putting on more blogs, shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Just really just working, for right, real, right. nothing else. Can we expect more music with you and Rule? You guys seem to oh, have yeah. a really 100%. great chemistry. 100%, yeah. feel me? I don't think I'd never put a project out without him on it, right. ever, feel me? Like, he really like, he know my sound, you feel me? Like. Mm -hmm. He used to sit in the studio with me all night, all night long. Like he, he make while I'm recording, he making another beat, pulling it up. You feel me? We going through songs like this at night. Like that El Kute tape, I probably had like 20 songs for it. I only put, I made it an EP, but like we made that shit probably like two, three days. Yeah. You feel me? So. Yeah. Sure. Nah, that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> All right. So Detroit been getting a lot of um, attention over the last couple of years. You know, in the, with the music scene, I mean, it's it's like the hot bed for music right now. I mean, yeah. if it's not Atlanta, it's Detroit. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, how does it feel to be, you know, named amongst this new crop of artists that's making a name, you know, for the D? 
Man, I just really, just really live in gratitude for real. Like, like I've been making music, like I say, in the city for so long. Like, I all, once I start making bangers, like, I always keep them coming. Like, for sure. Like, I always gonna have a banger at least. Like, like I say, I don't put out a lot of projects like that. So, like, when I do put out one song, it be a banger every time. Feel me? So, like, it's re I'm really just, like I say, just happy. You feel me? Like. Like I say, I live in gratitude with this shit for real. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of those artists like really embrace you too. I mean, yeah. you got features, I mean, across the board with, you know, artists that might not be as known as some, and then with, you know, the most buzzing artists, you mm -hmm. know, out of the D and mm -hmm. all that. So, yeah. you know, um, how does that feel just to get that respect like that? It's cool. I love it for real. Cause I'm like, like I say, like I do something with the artists that ain't really but cause like, I just wish when I was in that position, somebody would have did that for me, for mm -hmm. real. Like, it was one person that did it though. Like, Payroll, Payroll did it, you feel me? Like, Payroll pulled up on the studio with me when I was like 16 with his son. I picked his son up school, pulled straight up to the studio, did something for me. That's like my family, you feel me? So like, I be liking to spread that to the young guys because I know what it mean to them, you feel me? Because I know what it could have meant to me. Like, it's a lot of people that spent me and stuff like that. Like, so like, I just be, you know what I'm saying? Trying to show that love I wish I had type shit on the music side. So, you know, cause I done seen a lot of people have buzz and be gone, feel me? Like, got they little shit, be gone. It take, your music gotta really be that for you to still be out here and really buzzing and getting booked and the whole nine, you feel me? So like, you know, music be speaking for itself for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nah. And how important is it to have these relationships outside of music to then make the music, you know, even better and to, you know, just make those connections even stronger. It's real important. Super, it's most the most important for real. You know, the relationships outside the music, that's how you gonna get the bag. That's how you gonna get the playlist and the right looks and all that, you feel me? Like, that's most important, you feel me? So like, it's a lot of rappers that's buzzing that ain't really got no money, hmm. you feel me? If they don't have the right relationships, ain't nobody ain't telling them what to do or, oh, you can really get this. No, nah, don't settle for that. Get, yeah. You feel me? So, like, the relationship is key. No, nah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's I key. Uh, Tay B, you got any final words uh, for your fans? Any shout outs, anything like that? Oh, man, look for, them. look for the tape, man. It's be coming out soon. Make sure y'all keep streaming forever in my bag, the deluxe, the record on. Look out, man. Jumping off the porch, man. That's uh, all fix. facts, no cap. <laughs> I just bought a baby mansion with a three car garage. I be chillin' with my bitch, give me some head in the massage. Who the fuck you tryna hit? Why you shootin' in the crowd? I had to kick him out the hood. He